Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Andrew French, and I'm from Ad Colony. And today I want to talk about the battle for brands, how they look to influence hearts and minds in terms of making decisions. Um, and I'm going to start off with a real example of this and how you do influence hearts and minds to make decisions. We're lucky at Ad Colony. We've just hired uh, Thorby Orn Warden to uh, lead our publisher development efforts. And he's based here in Helsinki. And he said, you come into Helsinki, we're going to go grab a sauna. It's like, OK, Tor, we can do this. What's the dress code? We, we covered that off. And he said, halfway through the sauna, when you're really, really hot, you're going to run outside, jump into an ice lake, and get really, really cold, run back into the sauna, and get really, really hot again. And I was thinking, this sounds horrendous. There is no chance I'm doing this. And I started to rationalize that and think, well, maybe it could be fun. Maybe it could be a good thing to do. Uh, the reality of it is I haven't done it, and I'm still weighing it up. And I haven't made that decision yet. But certainly, my head is saying no, and my heart's probably saying no too. So that's how I make decisions with my heart and my head. And that's how brands want you to make decisions about their products and their services. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So why do marketers want this? What's, what's the premise of marketing? And as I said about making those decisions, it's really about a brand taking their message to their consumer and influencing some kind of positive behavior. And whether you're promoting a game, whether you're promoting Coca-Cola or Nike or Gillette, it's all about creating those positive sentiments, those positive engagements. It's all about making that consumer feel good about your product and about your service. I want to give a few examples of how that, how that looks. Um, you know, why, why do marketers want this? Well, when you go into a supermarket or into a shop to buy a chocolate bar, you kind of know what chocolate bar you're going to get. Are you going to buy a Kit Kat or a Snickers or a Mars bar? You have a preconceived idea. And the huge hundreds of millions of dollars that the FMCG brands spend on advertising gives you that concept, gives you that awareness that you go in and choose the product that you want. And I, and I think we're in a world that's increasingly brand-led in the app ecosystem. And I think it's fair to say that the App Store is a bit like that chocolate counter in today's world. You go into the App Store, you have a view of what app it is you want to install because you've had some exposure to that product. That the best example of this is Kim Kardashian. Um, took hundreds of millions of dollars through the App Store this summer. Was a huge hit. The title had failed before. Um, why did it work? People went there to install Kim Kardashian because of that awareness, that lifestyle. They wanted to live life. Not sure why, but as Kim Kardashian for a few days, for a few months. And I think the App Store is really starting to become like that, where you go there as a consumer knowing exactly what you want. So let's think about that and break that down to hopefully some usable and tangible examples. Um, the consumers. This guy. This guy is a gamer, right? This is Michael Thomason, a 43-year-old New Yorker who holds the Guinness World Record for the most number of video games owned. He's got t over 10,500 video games in his house. Um, this is the stereotype of a gamer, um, 18 to, to 44-year-old male. But the world's changed. The iPhone, Facebook, Android, these platforms have changed the face of consumers. These guys, these guys are gamers. They're young. They're the future of tomorrow. They're playing on iPads. They live in a hyper-connected world. This is really all that they know. And what about this lady? If she's a gamer too. Here she is with the uh, uh, Nintendo products that I've forgotten the name of. And you know, she's there exercising and using this as a, as a way to keep fit and a way to engage with, with games. And as a marketer, how do you speak to the first guy? And then do you speak to the kids? And then do you speak to this lady? It's a really, really tough thing to do. And it's not just about speaking to them. It's about influencing them, giving them some positive you know, message about your brand, influencing their hearts and minds to make those purchase decisions. And these guys aren't just uh, playing games. They're not just using uh, apps. And this is an example from uh, Billboard in 1983. This was the charts in the US. And, and 20 years ago, this was the, the, the standard for, um, for popular consumer um, activities and popular behavior. Everybody was buying LPs. Everybody was listening to music. And the mainstream brands wanted to be associated with those artists. They wanted to be associated with those charts. And here you've got uh, Pepsi uh, on an LP on a vinyl with Michael Jackson. Uh, those tie-ups are a lot less these days because consumer usage has moved to the right-hand side. It's moved to apps. This was the top chart for May. 
uh, Snapchat up there, Facebook up there, Instagram, Clash of Clans. This is now where consumer usage is. So as a marketer, if you want to influence the consumer, you need to be showing your ads, need to be showing your messages where those, where those consumers are. And consumers aren't just playing apps, they're using other channels too. And I want to show a TV ad from, from Good Game Studios for Empire Four Kingdoms. You can change the world, perform glorious deeds, and become legends. Are you ready? Play Empire Four Kingdoms, now on your tablet or smartphone. I'm sure you guys have noticed it was the same ad that aired across mobile, and it was the same ad that aired across TV. The channel became irrelevant in that scenario. It's all about showing the gameplay. It's all about showing the experience. And I think when it comes to marketing, when it comes to influence, and when it comes to using video, it's an incredibly powerful way of doing it. Um, there's a quote here from, from King about the use of a multi-channel world. So in 2013, we were the world's largest spenders on mobile banner ads. However, prompted and unprompted brand awareness metrics only started to shift after we subsequently started TV advertising for our games. And that was because they created the emotion. They showed people the gameplay. They showed people the experience. The TV was just a channel for delivering that video, but they were targeting their consumers with a rich and engaging message. And I want to show next some examples of some of the brand campaigns we've run and some of the brand activity that we've run to show you how this technique and this tactic is being utilized by some of the biggest names in the world. So that's some of the biggest brands in the world with tens of millions of dollars have created trying to influence those positive decisions. So there's a clue in the previous video, but it's who's, a show of hands, who's heard of Paragon uh, Space Development Corporation in the room? We've got anybody? Who's heard of Red Bull? Show of hands for those who've heard of Red Bull. And who's heard of Felix Baumgartner? And who's heard of Alan Eustace? OK, good. Right, so Alan Eustace is a Google exec who jumped out of a, a balloon above New Mexico just less than a month ago and broke every single record that Felix Baumgartner recorded. He was 10,000 feet higher. He did it without the various different aids. He had helium, of course, but this guy was never heard of. No one ever heard of this guy, and it was very much sailed under the radar. He had less than 1 million views on YouTube. Felix Baumgartner was watched live by 8 million people. He's had over 40 million uh, views on YouTube of his video, of him jumping out of um, a, a, a canister just towards the edge of space. And why was that? I remember that happening at the time. Red Bull created this, will he live or will he die? Red Bull created this whole kind of circus around this world first, around this event and around this activity. And it was a huge, huge thing to happen. 
And I think that just shows the power of the brand in creating that emotion and the power of the brand in terms of creating that positive thought. And at Ad Colony, we're trying to bring some of that stuff to mobile video. We're trying to bring some of that emotion to what we do. And here's a few examples of some of the guys that are doing it really well. So, so I love that, um, the wargaming example there. And the consumers that are watching that aren't thinking, I want to go and install an app. And not thinking, I want to go and play a game. Think, I want to go and drive those tanks and smash some shit up. I want to take it on. I want to play this experience. That's what it's all about. Not about mobile advertising. It's about influencing the consumer to think positively about your brand. And that's what I wanted to give across as a message today. Think about your customers, why they would do stuff, and how you can influence to be brand ambassadors and enjoy your products. Thank you very much. We're at Colony, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Helsinki.